Hello and welcome to Wish You Were Here Today. As usual, we've got lots of holiday ideas for you, particularly if you're planning to take the family away with you this year. But before we see what's coming up on the programme, today is your last chance to win a holiday this week. And this is what we've got for you. Like the sound of that? Well, all you have to do is answer this question. Lines are open right now and calls cost just 25 pence. And remember, we'll be announcing the winner before the end of the show, so you won't have to wait very long to find out whether you've won or not. Well, today is all about families, so where are we going? As Judy said, it was very quiet when they were there, but then again, that was low season. If you want things a little bit more lively, then the time to go is July and August, when of course all the shops and restaurants will be open. Don't forget, you've still got time to win a holiday in today's competition. If you know the answer to the question, then you'll also need to know that calls cost 25 pence and lines will be closing shortly to give us a chance to announce the lucky winner before the end of the programme. But before all that, there's loads more still to come on Wish You Were Here Today. Welcome back to Wish You Were Here Today. Now, I used to think of Switzerland primarily as a skiing destination and a pretty expensive one at that. But I had to revise my opinion somewhat after I went there in the height of summer, long after most of the snow had melted. One way to keep the costs down was to camp. I based myself at a campsite two miles from Interlaken. Just look at this view. With a ferry crossing from the UK, it takes about two days to drive here to the heart of the Alps, the place for an accessible family adventure. I'm staying at this lakeside campsite, five minutes from the town of Interlaken. The cheapest option is to pitch your own tent, but if that sounds too much like hard work, there are caravans and site tents too. I booked mine as part of a package. It is so strange to sleep on a bed in a tent. I'm spoilt now, I shall never lie on a ground sheet again. At the end of the bed you have a hanging rail for your wardrobe. It's a good idea to bring some coat hangers, I forgot. Over here we have another sleeping area with a divider, should you want some privacy. There are actually six beds, a tent sleeps up to six. Kitchen area with a back door, and it's fully equipped with all utensils. And if you have little ones, you've got a door here to keep them away from the cooker. As you can see, the facilities are excellent. Well, that's the Swiss for you, isn't it? There are lots of shower and toilet blocks dotted around the campsite. Some are mixed, this one's ladies only. It's clean, spacious and has unlimited hot water. And it's even got its own height adjustable hairdryer. There's a restaurant on site and a supermarket nearby. My advice is bring as much food as possible from home. Groceries are more expensive here. But when it comes to the most important stuff, there is a saving to be made. It's about a third cheaper. Interlaken sits between two lakes, Tunisay and Brienzesee. It's a bit touristy, but it's a good base to explore the scenery. Today's adventure is to get to one of the highest points in Europe, the Jungfrau. But I'm not climbing, I'm not hiking. It's more of a, a soft adventure, if you like, I'm taking the train. Or trains. It takes more than one. Train number one. You can hear the cowbells. It sounds beautiful. The last part of the journey takes you inside the Eiger. Train number three. We're still inside the mountain here, but it's a good idea to pop your shades on, because this window looks out onto the glacier and it is extremely bright. The last station is over a hundred years old. Here we are at the highest station in Europe. It's 11,333 feet. I can't believe that I've just stepped off a train and here I am at the top of a mountain. The altitude can make you feel a bit light-headed or short of breath, but it's worth acclimatising as there's lots to do, like a sled ride. It's August. I can't believe I've got skis on my feet in the middle of Europe. It costs nothing to look inside these carved ice tunnels. Here is basically a river of ice, which means it's moving the whole time. So this corridor I'm standing in actually grows by a foot and a half every year. There is about 30 feet of ice above my head. It's quite claustrophobic. Back at the campsite, it's time to meet my neighbours, the Saunders family. Hello, 
Sheila, how are you? Fine, thank you. Do you mind if I have a quick peek around? Huh? Yes, oh, yes, sure. Help yourself. We'll I was getting around. really excited that my tent had got a bed in it. This is much more <laughs> luxurious. <laughs> yes, we're very lucky here, actually. As you can see, we've got very spacious lounge area and it's got a, a good-sized double bed as well. We also have English plugs here. So what inspired you to come to Switzerland? Mountains. It's just a bit of a break from the norm. We, we, yeah. we didn't want all just beach. We, we've done that the last few years and it's a change, isn't it? Mountains are the big attraction here, so Sheila and I decided to jump off one. Maybe that feels a little bit tight, but in the No, tight, 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 tight is good. How come you look glamorous and James Bond <laughs> girl? You haven't seen me run off this hill yet. <laughs> oh, wow! I'm only here through peer pressure because Sheila's doing it. <laughs> oh, wow! Two, one, and go. This holiday offers experiences the whole family can enjoy, and camping is a good way to make an expensive country more affordable. Thank you so much. That was an incredible sensation. It has to be flying above birds. Right, well, if you want to throw yourself off a mountain like me, it will cost you £130, and for that you jump with a qualified instructor. However, if you don't have a director and camera crew saying to you, do it or else, and you want to do something more sensible, a sleigh ride will cost just under £4, and that's between the months of May and September. Well, I'm here at the top of Mount Tady in Tenerife. But for our next story, we took two intrepid travellers, flew them halfway around the world, and then put them in a camper van. Mark Little and his son Jasper travelled all the way from their home in Sussex to Australia. Well, I assume they're talking about the scenery there and not the inside of that motorhome. Can you imagine the state that it'd be in after 10 days, two Aussie blokes stuck in there by themselves? Doesn't bear thinking about. Now, some of the places that Mark and Jasper visited are not accessible by public transport. For example, you have to drive to the Wombian Caves, but the journey from Sydney, Canberra or Wollongong is spectacular. Well, that's all for me at the top of Mount Tady at 3,555 metres. I'll be back again next week with some more fantastic holiday ideas for you and, of course, a chance for you to win your very own trip in our competition. And today's winner is coming up very shortly. Good luck with that and I'll see you next week.